Hello guys, um, I'm Carlos and we're here today to talk uh, to you a little bit and give you a brief introduction of the, the reports that the schools and the students will get after they take the, the TOEFL tests. Uh, for us, institutionally speaking, uh, the most important part of the whole process starts when the students finish the tests. That's when we get the results, and once we get the results, we can analyze them and make a, a proper diagnostic of the level of the students and of the level of the learning of the, the English in, in a specific school or, or in, in the whole country. So it's very important um, that we take our time to actually analyze those, those numbers, the data that comes from the tests that the students took, so that we can plan accordingly, we can see what's happening in the schools, and we can uh, set targets for our future. Right. So to talk to us a little bit about that, I have here Amy Cellini, right? Yes. Did I pronounce right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> She's the director of TOEFL Young Student Series. Uh, and, and, and we're going to have a brief talk about the importance of that and what actually will the, the schools get um, once the, the tests are finished and the results are, are processed. So, Amy, tell us um, in, uh, briefly what... Um, what will the students receive when, once they finish the, the test? They, they, they took the test. There's a time for processing it. But once they get something, what will they get? And then what will the schools get? Um, the students will get um, a score report that will list their score. It will list their um, Common European Framework level. It will list the Lexile reading measure, which I'll talk more about later. And it will list a bunch of can-do statements, telling the student what they can do. They will also get a certificate of achievement um, that they can hang and be proud of, it, that, they, that, that they are learning English. You were saying uh, also that the, the moment of, of, the, of this, uh, the, the receiving of the reports and all that, uh, that I, I thought it was very interesting what you said. It, it's a moment of, of uh, celebration. Can you right. tell us a little bit about that? The purpose of our tests is to help you is to help you learn. It is not to say this is what you can do. It is to say here's where you are at, and here's where you can go. Um, it is a measure of your a celebration of your achievement of what you've done for the year, and it should be looked at that way. No matter what you've gotten, you've you've worked very hard, and this report will show you and tell you what you've learned so far. And with your teacher's help, you can learn what you will learn next. Great, great. Uh, we know that that's very important for the students. But what about the schools? You know, the schools usually uh, want to get results. You know, they want, uh, in average, they want, you know, oh, okay, my students get, in average, they get to that level, or they, they want to know where their students are at and how can they prepare the students better. You know, so what will the schools get, will receive, to help them plan that? The, stu the schools will get um, a roster of all the students, and um, at the top of the roster, for it will show also show um, how they compare with other Uno schools on the test, um, and it will show um, you can get a glance at how the school has done, and you will be able to look at that and see who is way, way above what the average is and who is way below. And then one of the other pieces of material that you get is the can-do statements for all of the levels on the test. And with that, you can help the students by looking at the next level, say, ah, here's what we need to do next to get you to the next level of learning English. So it is both a, a measure of where you are and then by looking at the the different other levels, it's a measure of what do I do next. Oh, this is very, this is very, this is actually what the schools want. You know, mm -hmm. They want some, some more guidance on, well, okay, we know we're here, how can we get to the next level, right? So that will help that. 
And uh, another thing that I, th I thought it was very interesting that you said is that when you get when when you get the roster, well, the roster is, is basically a spreadsheet, you know, with the scores, the CFR level of the students. But what what Amy mentioned is that you know you can see the students that are way above the average and students that are way below the average, the weakest and the strongest students, so that next year you have to be uh, very, to, to, to focus on them. You need to give some extra support to the students that are way below. And you, give to, you need to give extra challenges to the ones that are way above. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they won't be motivated. Correct. Is it, is it correct? That's, that is absolutely correct. And in the English Language Learning Center, there are actually, in the um, scope and sequence document, there actually are suggestions of what to do to help to uh, motivate higher students, to give them a, a more difficult challenge, um, so that there are resources right um, online to help the teacher um, in adapting things to make it more interesting for those students. Uh, finally, tell me, well, uh, we, were, we were discussing that, we were having meetings about that and all that, uh, and we were always we're, we're always discussing ways to improve that, you know, to improve the do documentation that we're gonna we're gonna provide the schools so that they can plan better, they can plan easier uh, on the development of the students. What uh, do you foresee for the schools for for this year in terms of uh, the package of materials that they're gonna they're gonna get uh, with the reports? Well, I'm actually going to create a package that at the top will be a score report. And, uh, and, I'll, and there will be a page number by each section. And if you go to that page number, it is going to explain to you how to use that part of the score report and um, where appropriate, give you some classroom activities that you can use in order to work with students on these skills. Because remember, the skills that these tests are measuring are not are skills to be learning English in a, in a classroom or to use English in everyday life. They are not skills that are specific to this test. They are skills that if you can do these things, then you can learn in an English-speaking classroom. And you can also take advantage of this learning for even the Portuguese classes. That's correct. That's correct. These same reading and listening skills are listening skills that they are doing in their, their, their first language of Portuguese. And you were you were mentioning something that we are actually not actually uh, we're, we're not talking that much, but it's there. It's the Lexile. Uh, can you explain us briefly okay. about that? Okay, the Lexile measure. Um, we work with a company called Metametrics, who developed um, this methodology of looking at text and develop, determining its complexity. And when we launched TOEFL Junior and TOEFL Primary, we had a research study that determine for our test how our test align with their different levels so that we could on our score report give the student their Lexile measure. There's a TOEFL um, Young Student Series Lexile website where the student goes in, they enter their Lexile score, then they check off what are they interested in. So if they like MMA, if they like sports, they're going to check off what their particular interest is and the next thing you know, there's going to be a list of books that are at their reading level. And in, in most cases, there'll also be short stories, short paragraphs they can read right then and there. They can save that list and reference it and, and, and keep track of how they're doing reading. There's also um, a tool for teachers that if they want to see if something that they are using is maybe too difficult for their class, that they can actually put the um, text in a Lexile analyzer and it will tell them the difficulty level of what they're using so that if they have doubts about something, they can look at measure it and make sure that it is appropriate. It's very interesting. So it's all in there, mm -hmm. right? Yep. And the, the question is, and the... the, the, the the big challenge for us is to take the most, the best advantage of, of, of this tool. It's, I think it's a wonderful tool. And, um, well, talking about uh, the, the time, you know, um, for the schools to receive those, those reports. We're f just about finishing the, the, the window of administration, right? right? Um, 
we do you think that we, we will be able to have something for for the schools to analyze by the end of this year already oh, absolutely. Right? in November uh, or, yes yeah? yeah okay so in November uh, you'll probably get the, the some initial reports on that and and your coach will be able to to help you on uh, on the analysis of the, the data and on uh, planning for the following year right okay and Yes, sir. And then in February, we'll follow up with some additional charts that that we need time to create. Um, oh, great! So we're going to have so we're going to have this this moment in November, and then in February, we're going to have in depth information. More, right. Yeah, more, more in depth. More, more in depth. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. Well, thank you very thank much, my Amy. My pleasure. And thank you guys for watching. See you. Bye bye. Unui Educação